Welcome, dear educators from all over the world to the 16th webinar of Juan Juan Village for this year. Welcome all to this webinar, very, very important webinar, a new approach. We are honored today. We have a great guest for the second time this year on the demand of the public, on all educators, Mr. Luke Powells. He is going to talk to us to explain to us uh, the secrets and what is this fusion education, the new approach in education for the 21st century lifelong learner. Welcome, Mr. Luc. Mr. Powers, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, our internationally acclaimed experienced educator and workshop leader, Mr. Luc Powers, was born in Belgium and is currently based in Wuhan, China. He is a passionate educator with more than 30 years of experience in developing, managing, and leading schools in Europe, Asia, and Africa. During his practice as a school leader and developer, Luc has always put the students at the center of the teaching and learning process. He believes and advocates that students, schools, and parents are connected through a collaborative triangle. The relationship between the student and school, as well as the student and parent, is typically strong, but the parent and school partnership is often overlooked. He, it's crucial to develop healthy communication and collaboration between the school and the parents. This medium of communication and collaboration will lead to the development and establishment of a dynamic culture of learning and investment in the school's learning environment. In times of division, we invited Mr. Powells to introduce to us his experience on fusion education and more specifically on the importance of the interlinguistic pedagogical dimension. Dimension. Welcome, Mr. Powers. We are very honored to have you again today with us. And all the educators are waiting for this very important topic, your explanations based on your experience and your innovative experience on what is this fusion education. And the first question I'm going to ask you today, what is fusion education? Is it just a new pedagogical approach, or it is considered one of the pillars of the 21st century education. Thanks, John. And I'm uh, happy to be here for the second time. Thank you. Um, it's a good question to start off. And I wish I could say that fusion education is a term and a concept that we know already for many years that we are using already and still trying to find out how to use it better, but it hasn't. Fusion education, actually, not many people are using it. I started using it in 2015 when I founded a bilingual primary education program in Wuhan, central China. And I'm sure that there are a few islands mm. here and there uh, with people trying out some concepts of fusion education. But if I look at schools, around China and elsewhere, a lot of schools are using the term fusion education in marketing uh, towards parents uh, in um, parent, school parent meetings. But they don't get any further than saying where East meets West, the best of the East with the best of the West. But if you look deeper, no one is explaining what it stands for. So. Even you look on the internet and try to find fusion education, it's very hard to find anything. I was happy to find Fusion Academy, hopeful that they would explain the concept of fusion education. But again, no, they said Fusion, fusion Academy is a fully accredited private middle and high school with a completely personalized approach. No matter what you are looking for, Fusion Academy is ready to customize a program that is best for your child. Hmm, we are not getting any wiser. So my first conclusion, therefore, is that fusion education is not well defined yet. And fusion education is not well accepted yet, despite, despite the fact that we have in China alone hundreds of bilingual education programs and schools. 
globally, we have many more schools that combine a national curriculum with an international curriculum. And the potential, therefore, for fusion education is huge. So that's why we organized this webinar to look at what is fusion education, how can we implement it? So, John, I need to conclude also yep. that most of these uh, bilingual schools, schools using a national curriculum, I see. besides an international curriculum, are using it separate from each other, are, are developing, developing both programs separate from each other. It's not blended. It's not meeting each other. And that's a huge problem because we look at blending uh, subjects. Yeah. So we have, we make, we make uh, integrations uh, horizontally, Absolutely. very weak. We look at vertical integration. How do they combine learning developments over time? Well, we see that most teachers, they finish a unit yeah. and they continue with the next unit. Yeah. And they continue again. So we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't blend uh, that much the um, the learning developments over time. Language-wise, most programs are in a single language. National curriculum in China is in Chinese. Um, international curriculum in English. Some international programs in French or even in German. So let's explain fusion education. John, I didn't have lunch. I didn't have lunch, so I feel like I want to eat something first. Uh, <laughs> shall we? Shall we? Shall we talk about fusion cuisine? Yes. Yes. Why not? Yes. If if I say fusion cuisine, what do you think about? Well, it's outstanding because there are a lot of uh, trends of cuisine there and a lot of taste there blended together. So it's something creative, mm -hmm. innovative. It will give me the appetite to see what is this fusion cuisine. And I'll be linked to all those cultures and all those cuisines, all those cultures via the different cuisines. Mm, nice. So we could say fusion cuisine blends the culinary traditions of two or more nations mm -hmm. to yes. create innovative and sometimes quite interesting dishes. Yes. I would like to, I would like to transpose this to education, John. No problem. And then it sounds like, and then it sounds like this. Fusion education blends the educational traditions of two or more regions to create innovative and sometimes quite interesting practices and programs. As educator, isn't that what we want? Yes. Creating innovative and quite interesting practices and programs. Of course, we can say like it tends to be more common in culturally diverse and metropolitan areas. But we live in a world that is very global and that is actually one big metropolis. So I would say like everyone should be open to fusion education. Uh, John, I think we can look at some visual uh, aids here to better understand yes, yes, fusion of course. education. So when we talk about fusion education today, we will see that we will talk about horizontal integration. Are we combining, are we blending subjects? Uh, are we combining it towards one subject called knowledge? Secondly, the vertical integration. Are we connecting learning developments over time? Thirdly, and that's a, a new dimension, uh, fusion between languages, the interlinguistic um, dimension. That is rather new. And I will talk a lot about this today as well. So this is how we see fusion education today. Great, great. So that's why now I'm going to go to my next question, Mr. Powers, mm -hmm. very interesting. And I'm sure everyone is waiting to see more details. So today, mm -hmm. can we consider fusion education one of the basis of establishing innovative and novel pedagogical programs and practices? We have now established the term education. So can we consider fusion education one of the basis of establishing the innovative programs and practices, please? Mr. Powell? Sure. I, sure, John. I think in the definition we already talk about mm -hmm. to create innovative and quite interesting uh, programs and practices. So let's build on on that. And I would like to share an example with you. Yes, yes. Uh, when I started the, uh, the bilingual uh, primary education program in Wuhan, 
uh, Central China in 2015, we started with the grades one to four. And with the grades with the grade four students, I looked at noodles, actually. Yeah. I mean, China is famous for noodles, and every yes. every region has the their specialty new noodles. And I thought, let's do a project about local mm -hmm. Wuhan noodles with the four grade students. Uh, the, the local noodles are called regamien or drop, mm -hmm. uh, hot dry noodles. Actually, I brought together uh, several teachers, English language teachers, mm -hmm. foreigners. Uh, the Chinese social studies and science teacher, mm -hmm. the art teacher, and people from the kitchen. And we started off um, looking at the history of uh, regamien or hot dry noodles. And, it, and I was surprised to see that nobody knew about no. the history. Mm -hmm. uh, after some research, it turned out it has a history of 107 years. So we, we, we got the students interested into regamien and noodles. And then we looked at the ingredients. So we were teaching in English, in Chinese. The science teacher came in to look at which, which in, ingredients yeah. are we using in making regamien? How do we process them? And next we went into the kitchen, the canteen of the school. Very interesting, John. We were using English, Chinese, but when we went into the, the canteen, the kitchen of the school, they were speaking local Wuhanese, mm. local dialect. Mm. So we were mixing languages, besides mixing uh, subjects and content. Um, after making together, making the, the hot dry noodles in the kitchen, we took it to the classroom and we had fun eating noodles. Mm. That was just the beginning. Then we had a, a project where we uh, organized the students in group and we asked them to open a noodle shop at school. So for grade four students, not an easy task. So they had to come up with a name for their noodle shop, a logo. They had to create, design a logo with the art teacher for their noodle shop. We gave them cardboard balls that they, would, that they had to design as well yes. with the art teacher. They made a menu, a price list, and then they made the noodles and they sold the noodles at an exhibition at the school. If you look at this example, then we work horizontally. We integrate mm -hmm. different subjects towards yeah, one yeah, subject called oh, knowledge, wow. John. Um, vertically, uh, learning developments over time. Why are we teaching the kids at the age of 10 to make noodles, to market their noodles, to sell their noodles? These are, these are life skills, actually. Um, of course, I see a lot of educators right now thinking, yeah, but that's exactly what we are doing in our international program. Yeah. We do integrate horizontally. We do integrate vertically. Agree. But are you also blending the languages? So far as, as far as I know, I see that most international programs are taught in one language. Yes. And it's not about using two or even three languages together. Here we were using English together, uh, Chinese, and in the kitchen, uh, local Wuhanese. For the kids, it creates a natural environment of using languages, of, of learning things through different languages. So it's, it's a very interesting project here to look at what does it mean for kids to grow up in a multi-language environment? So let's look at the interlinguistic dimension. And I think, uh, if you look at the kids, how they learn in, in, in an environment where you use different languages, then you have three groups of students um, understanding uh, or learning. The smarter kids, they will, they will learn uh, through both languages. They will pick up things from uh, through the Chinese uh, language classes and through the English language classes. These kids are actually um, learning more deeper. They are eager to learn more and discover more. And these kids will develop their higher thinking skills better and also communication skills. Mm -hmm. Then we have two other groups. Uh, the group of kids that struggle with the language. 
they only pick up things from the Chinese language teacher. So they struggle to cross that language bridge to learn different things through English. So different shade, differentiation is needed here, John. Yeah. Uh, when we start to organize fusion education, we realize that differentiation is really very important. How do we help these kids with the language acquisition so that they can cross that language, that culture bridge and learn also from what we have yes. at the other side of the bridge. Uh, the third group are kids that struggle with the more traditional way of teaching in China and who more easily pick up things from the international teacher uh, because the international teacher often is using more diverse teaching strategies. Mm -hmm. And these kids, we need to help them as well through differentiation to see that at both sides of the language and cultural bridge, there are things to learn that are equally important. So John, um, let's, uh, let's look at another example. Good, let's go. Cool. Um, and this year I spent a few weeks at mm -hmm. uh, a UK school in, north, in the north of China. Good. And they were organizing different uh, science courses in, mm -hmm. for example, grade, primary grade five. Uh, the Chinese teacher was teaching science in Chinese one class a week. An international teacher was teaching science in English uh, mm -hmm. one time a week. And then we had uh, one teacher teaching STEAM, bilingual, mm -hmm. using English and Chinese. Mm -hmm. You would expect here that fusion education could help, would help them to fuse the different parts of science or, or approaches of science together, uh, experimenting together, uh, putting language together, but no, John. Actually, we miss a big chance here, a big opportunity, because schools still are organizing these classes separately from each other. The teachers, they don't spend the time to sit together, to share things, and to come to a concept where we yes. blend uh, not only ideas, but horizontally and vertically, and also languages. So let's, before we get into, into, into examples yeah. and more details, let, let's look at the common advantages of fusion education. Yes. First of all, the students, they acquire a novel language. Like we have seen. Through the language, they explore a novel culture. And it's amazing when, when, you, when you start to, to blend languages. Of course, culture is following. Kids are not only improving their literacy skills, but are also exploring new knowledge areas. Um, they, they, they become better in the subject knowledge, in literacy, but also they become more creative with understanding. So they are interpreting new things, just like we said in the definition, we blend to create innovate, innovative and quite interesting uh, practices and programs. Excellent. So Mr. Powers, I understood with fusion education, when you are introducing the interlinguistic dimension, this will help mm -hmm. you automatically to make the differentiation process more instinctive more easy because most of the facilitators nowadays they complain they say how can i differentiate it's difficult i have 30 students 24 students different uh, mm. low achievers high achievers number one is helping in differentiation which is very very mm -hmm. important it's helping in mm -hmm. horizontal integration because you cannot integrate between subjects easily if you're not integrating between different languages and at the same time it's helping in its vertical integration you cannot integrate within time as you said between units between weeks between different weekly plans with plans if you don't do the free education and that's why my third question to make it easier for our educators to understand that framework what type of framework is used to support fusion education in schools within the teaching facilitating learning environment of our students good john um, I think it's important to, from my, my point of view, I like to use a more simple uh, framework. And I have four steps in my simple framework. Okay. 
the first step is you teach the kids. Okay, there's the, um, mm -hmm. the slide. We teach and facilitate knowledge and a few skills to the kids. Mm -hmm. Second step, we provide learning by doing moments, hands-on experiences, experiments, uh, research. Thirdly, we want kids to, based on a few leading questions, to make conclusions. Mm -hmm. This is best done uh, in group work or with a mentor. And fourth part is we provide time to kids to express themselves after they have made conclusions. Mm -hmm. um, expression can be, can be actually, it's a good uh, moment actually to involve kids, mm -hmm. to let them choose which form of expression are, are they going to choose? Is it orally? Is it written? Is it a video? Is it, is it acting? Is it artwork? And so on and so on. Mm -hmm. But also what kind of language do they want to use? Once you start to blend languages, once you start to develop the interlinguistic dimension, kids have interest maybe to use English or to be bilingual or just to use uh, Chinese if you're in China. Mm -hmm. So let's use this model, simple framework on yeah. the science grade five example in one of the schools I visited this year. Mm -hmm. So we had science by a Chinese teacher, science by an English teacher and STEAM by a, uh, by a Chinese teacher, bilingually. Yes. Actually, if you want to develop fusion education, you make time for these teachers to sit together. Yes. What kind of knowledge, what kind of basic skills do you have in, in the Chinese science class that you want to blend Mm -hmm. with those in the English language class or even with STEAM. Schools don't yes. do that, John. Yeah. Schools don't make time for that. So we, we miss out on a potential here to sit together. And this could lead to the Chinese teacher and the international teacher to organize one class together. Mm. For example, they say, okay, we, we have similar content to... Uh, to teach the students. Why don't we organize a class where we are doing it Combine. together? Yeah. In Chinese, in English. So yeah. there we come to the inter interlinguistic dimension as well. I see that we don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, teachers are often thinking within the box of the school book, textbook yes. framework. Once you if you want to blend, you have to jump out of that. Yeah, out of the box. Working with, yeah, working with, with teachers, usually I tell them to, your work is 50% coming from the textbooks, but the other 50% is coming from you and through your collaboration with other teachers. Secondly, we could sit together again to look at the learning by doing opportunities in the Chinese science course, in the English science course in the STEAM course. And we could combine some, or we could say like, maybe first this experiment, then that experiment. So there's a clear learning development, or you could just combine experiments. And again, using two different languages. In most schools, we don't look at this, we don't blend. So we miss the chance here uh, to develop fusion education because at the end, who's benefiting from all of this? The students. Yes. Yes. The students, their mind is open. They don't want to separate science in Chinese, science in English, yes. STEAM separately. They want to see it all together. That's how they learn. And that's that's in real life, Mr. Powers. That's real life. Yeah. In real life, we don't exactly. separate. That's... We don't separate French and English, Chinese and English. We don't separate science and uh, and uh, mathematics. It's it's all it's all there. It's it's a it's a package. We cannot tell them. Oh, yep. sorry, I need to think in Chinese now. Give me two seconds, and I will give you an answer. Or I need to think only steam now. I will give you. A, I need to think only in English now. And it doesn't, mm. it doesn't work that way. <laughs> It's, it's important to, to have several moments where, where yeah. you use different languages in one class. So students develop a natural feeling for using different languages, for learning from different languages. Uh, step three 
is creating uh, moments where students can make conclusions. Several schools do have moments where students in group or with a mentor can make conclusions, but not enough. Mm -hmm. Students need to learn that, need to think, reflect based on questions, based on research, based on, on knowledge we have taught them. We need to create more time for that. And thirdly, expression often neglected or often put at the end of a program or a unit, uh, while students need regular moments of presenting uh, through different languages, through different uh, uh, expression forms. John, can I share another example with you? Yes, yes, of course. Go ahead, please. Uh, because I want, I, want, I want the audience to understand better uh, that simple model, the four-step model. And I would like to share an example on traditional sports. Mm -hmm. And my starting point is why do some traditional sports develop into national, international, mm -hmm. and even Olympic sports, while other local traditional sports just stay local? Yeah. So this is an interesting uh, concept where we can use fusion education. Step one, we teach them. What do we teach them? Maybe the, let me think, rugby, football, very interesting in, uh, yeah. in the UK. Rugby was the sport of the common people. Football was yeah. the sport of the, of the upper class. Uh, do the students know that? Why should the students learn that? Uh, what can they conclude from that? Uh, chess, for example. John, do you know where chess originated? I don't know, but I know that in Armenia, it's one, it's a, it's a subject that they teach in schools. Mm, good, 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 good. Again, we can use different languages to look at uh, traditional sports. We can explain when do we say a local traditional sport is a traditional sport. Mm -hmm. Step one, creating uh, learning by doing. Um, kids can, can, can research their own country, what kind of mm -hmm. local traditional sports are there in their community. They can talk to the grandparents in their younger times, what kind of uh, local traditional sports uh, did they have. So some research and kids can, can also research why some of these sports develop into international sports and why others don't. Yes. Yeah. Conclusions about this. Expression can be organizing a competition at school of traditional sports. So we, I can give a lot of several examples, John. Mm -hmm. uh, it all comes back to the same. We try to Ooh. integrate horizontally different subjects together. We try to integrate vertically. We follow up on learning developments of the child. And we are looking at the interlinguistic dimensions. Make sure that mm. different languages are used together. So kids learn the different languages in a natural way, learn how to get into this, yes. to learn more from it, uh, develop their higher thinking, become excellent communicators, interested in, in, in learning and mm -hmm. discovering. So that's very important here. Excellent example. Yes, Mr. Paulus. Yep, I'm, um, I'm waiting for the next slide, John. It's there. Okay, a fun example here. And I would like to ask the audience, can you use that simple model? Step one, step two, step three, step four on this slide. What do we see? A pictorial poem. I love poems, John. I yes, even love... I love teaching poems or working with poems with students in different languages. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. And if you send the kids home and talk to their grandparents, what kind of poems were they using before at school? What kind of poems are you oh, using now no. at school? Um, conclusions about poems. What kind of pic pictorial poems are the students going to make? An expression. You see one example here. Mm -hmm. How many languages have we got here? One, two, three, six, four, five, five, six, six seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. languages, ten. John. Ten. How many of these? How many of these languages do you know? Only four. 
Four only, can, can you, unfortunately. Can you, t- can you Ar- tell us? Yeah, Armenian, uh, Spanish, French, and Arabic. And mm. English. Spanish is not fluent, so let's say four fluently and one half-half. So how do we say the sun is shining brightly in French? Uh, le soleil est en train de briller fortement. How do we say uh, le soleil est... Où on trouve le français? Okay, le soleil oui. brille uh, très fort aujourd'hui. Oui. How do we say it in, Ar- in Armenian? Areva baizar pailume. Wow, beautiful language. Yeah. Beautiful language. Yes, yes. Um, okay, good. I think uh, we already begin to see interesting questions yes. popping up. That's good. Yes, That's good yes. for the uh, yes. for the for the second part. So examples here where you better understand. Um, mm. Use different steps. Um, think about how we integrate horizontally. Yes. Think about how we integrate vertically. Think about how to develop the interlinguistic dimension. So a conclusion I would like to make, John, is that, you know, students, they don't have borders in their mind. The more, the more stimuli we give them, the more they make connections in their mind, the better they learn. So Mm -hmm. different languages naturally together. Can you imagine the connections that this makes in the head of the students? Eight years old, nine years old. Yeah. This is amazing, and that's what we need to um, do. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's actually the the strongest part of fusion education. Yes. Great. So, great. I think it's a very uh, clear framework with great examples, Mr. Powers, and I'm sure that now there are more the educators that are attending us from all over the world. They are more in it now. They know uh, what's fusion education. They see yep. the influence of fusion on real life based education they see that fusion is mm-hmm. creating innovative and sustainable and creative classrooms without borders a student centered yep. classroom differentiated classrooms that's why yep. uh, that's why fusion education is not only there to help horizontal integration vertical integration i see that it's going to help only to overcome teachers overcome all classroom management challenges so that's why my next question will be, how can fusion education support teachers and or facilitators to overcome all classroom management challenges and in establishing new approaches in co-facilitating or co-teaching? Another good question, John. Um, the focus is on teachers right now. And I believe with fusion education, if you focus too much on the curriculum, then it's really hard for teachers. Mm -hmm. It's challenging for teachers to implement fusion education. So it might be better to start from classroom management Mm -hmm. to focus on co-teaching or co-facilitating. So first of all, I would like to uh, share with you what is important if we want to develop fusion education uh, through classroom management and co-facilitating. So first of all, collaborative planning is important. I think without collaboration, we don't get anywhere. Um, Ask yourself, how often as a teacher are we getting together to discuss meaningful issues and topics? Um, most of the time we are busy with daily tasks, yes. preparing our lessons, assessing the students, talking with parents. We don't have much time. We don't have much time. So we don't, we think we don't have much time. So we don't make time for sitting together and trying to collaborate. Uh, through collaboration, we tend to blend more. We tend to create more and that's what we what we need here Mm. secondly uh, through fusion education we can reduce classroom challenges i will give a few examples in a few minutes Um, i use it for the first time using fusion education on classroom management in tianjin uh, area near beijing in 2019 where i started from classroom management, uh, bringing teach together, mm-hmm. discussing uh, common understanding, but also differences 
between the different teachers. So we, we agreed after several meetings, we agreed on, on more effective classroom management indicators and it worked perfectly. Mm. It made the students more active. It made the teachers more motivated, uh, willing to work together as well. Thirdly, and maybe most importantly, through fusion education, we facilitate differentiated child-centered classrooms without borders. We have seen already that differentiation is important. If we focus on the language acquisition, on the interlinguistic dimension, students will approach this in a different way. So we have to help students in a different way, in a differentiated way. And child-centered, everything should be child-centered, John. Yes. Everything should start from the students. And it's again, like I said before, the way students develop their brain is making connections. Yes. So why should we have walls yep, to agree. constrain developments in the brain of the children? So we break down walls as well, classroom without borders. But let's look at classroom management, John, because I want to show a few practical, ap practical applications of fusion yes. education. So what is the purpose of classroom management? Well, the purpose of classroom management is to create a safe and efficient learning environment. And looking at classroom management, we have two, four, six, seven topics. Uh, in the school in Tianjin, I covered all topics uh, discussing uh, the understanding, common understanding differences and coming to um, uh, if a list of effective uh, classroom management indicators. And I would like to start with classroom design. If I want to talk about, if I want to talk about um, fusion education, I need to say intentional classroom design. We have an intention here. And two indicators I like to use are use the positioning of your desks, displays, storage, and equipment to create a warm and welcoming room. Secondly, make sure you have removed all unnecessary and distracting items from your classroom. The second indicator is a little bit tricky. We think that we need something here, we need something there because we want it near to us to use, but students fall over it, teachers fall over it, so you have small accidents. But using these two indicators, my first suggestion to all of you is when you go back to school, can you invite two or three of your colleagues at school, sit together and ask each other about how would you define a warm and welcoming classroom? You will see that there are differences in defining a warm and welcoming classroom. Discuss about this, because that's how collaboration, that's how collaboration starts, yes. by sitting together a short time. And because I saw a question, how much time is needed for yes. collaboration? You don't need much time. Sometimes five minutes sit together and do something, 10 minutes. You need, a, you need the right mindset to collaborate. Um, okay, John, uh, I share an example as well. Uh, to show that how we use fusion education yes, to please. solve problems, to reduce challenges in classroom management. Mm -hmm. uh, back to Tianjin 2019, where I was working with, with classroom management, um, we had a primary school and a middle school, mm -hmm. bilingual. And an American teacher struggled with one class where mm -hmm. he was a little bit obese and he struggled to, to move in between the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the desks and uh, the chairs to get to the backside of mm -hmm. the classroom because he wanted to pay attention to every single student. The Chinese teacher and homeroom teacher said like, no, 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 the parents are asking to, to put the kids in front mm -hmm. close to the blackboard or e-board mm -hmm. because they need to hear everything and they need to see everything. The foreign teacher came to me and said like, look, I cannot do this anymore. I need to leave the classroom through the front door. I need to go to the back door, enter the class again to talk mm -hmm. to the kids in the back. 
because he wanted to, to, uh, to help all the kids. Finally, I spent more than one hour with the homeroom teacher, with the international teacher, to change the position of the desks and, and, um, and chairs to find a solution where actually both were satisfied. This example shows that you need to go through hardship in the beginning yes. to make people understand each other, to make people collaborate, yes. to make people move on together. So these are examples that are really very important if you want to develop collaborative sure. work and, and, and fusion education. Uh, my next point in classroom management is communication. Mm -hmm. I think communication is everywhere, probably the most important element. In schools, we want clear and consistent lines of communication between mm -hmm. teachers, administrators, students, and parents. If you don't have that, you will lose respect of your colleagues. You will lose attention of your students and you won't have any cooperation with the parents. So that's why it's very important. Yes. Again, I would like to share with you one example and one suggestion. In the school in Tianjin, despite the fact that I was developing fusion education through classroom management, we still had a problem with communication. Mm. Two principles, a Chinese principle oh. and me international principle. principle. Chinese principle is the number one in the Chinese school. I'm the number two. two. Yeah. I was working with the foreign teachers and the co-teachers, uh, the classroom, uh, the home teachers. I was, I, was, I was working also with most of these Chinese teachers. But the principal worked, uh, had a meeting every week with the Chinese teachers arranging things, giving directions for teaching and learning. I was having my meetings, different communication. Mm. At, after some time, teachers were confused. Teachers came to me, look, I would like to follow your ideas, but my principal has said this mm. and that. I don't know what to do. At the end, who is losing? The students. Mm. A suggestion, if on communication. If we want students to be more natural with different languages, to learn from yes. different languages, and then we talk about the interlinguistic dimension, dimension. I, then I also want teachers to go through this. We need to work mm. together more. We need to understand that there are differences between people. Mm. There are more differences between, between local people and international people language-wise, culture-wise, uh, approach towards education. We need to go through this, like, like the one example I mentioned before, because that's what we want students as well, mm -hmm. using the different languages, using the different understanding viewpoints on, on different things, understanding that people think differently, but also understanding that there is a common sense here, yes. that if we work together, we can get much further yeah i agree okay um scheduling organization sure. is also an element of classroom management um an important point here john is that if you organize fusion education through steam or other projects for example you want to put the the chinese science teacher and the foreign the science, science teacher. teacher together in one class you need to schedule your, your, mm -hmm. your daily schedule should be very clear. Students mm -hmm. need to know what classes they have, the breaks they have, how they can use these break times. Mm -hmm. too, often, too often I see kids coming back from a PE class, they have to move equipment, they, they eat their apple from break mm -hmm. time and they, they walk in the classroom two by two, three by th three, coming, mm -hmm. coming in late, you miss out on your mm -hmm. whole setup of mm -hmm. having a fusion education, education class or a STEAM class. So that's important also to have regular daily schedules. A last point on uh, instructional techniques, talking about classroom uh, management. Fusion education is working together, sharing experiences with, mm -hmm. with, with other teachers, especially when we think about learning styles. Mm -hmm. uh, students have different learning styles. Uh, are we talking about this? 
are we using the information we get to mm -hmm. design and redesign our classes or diversify our teaching strategies? Yes. Secondly, if we, if we try out different teaching strategies, are we sharing that with other teachers? Not yes. often. Not often. What I suggest here, and a, and a good practice, a lot of these sharing in schools is traditional. Teachers observe other teachers. They report formally, uh, written, orally, and uh, they are not always comfortable to speak out. I like to create clusters in a school mm -hmm. where you have four teachers four working teachers. together, getting to, getting to know each other, becoming comfortable with each other. The first two or three weeks, they feel uncomfortable because you have to give comments to each other. You observe each mm -hmm. other's classes, you discuss more mm -hmm. openly. But if you guide them well, after three weeks, they are so open, helping yes. each other, trusting each other, supporting each other. And this is so important because suddenly things are possible. Mm. Okay, John, uh, that's Great. about uh, classroom management. Let's move into co-facilitating. Facilitating. Uh, I like to say co-teaching because I'm used to say co-teaching, <laughs> but I agree with you. It's better to say co-facilitating. I think we come to the to the the core of fusion education. You call it a magic potion. I think it is. We should focus on uh, co-facilitating. But I want to open your mind a little bit. Mm -hmm. Usually, we think co-facilitating about we have an international teacher and we have a Chinese teacher together, co-facilitating. But it's more than that. We can put a science teacher together with a social science teacher. We can put Chinese language teacher together with an English language teacher, teacher. Talking, about, talking about poetry. It's not yes. something we easily do, but we should start to do these kind yes, of things. Yes. We can, we can have different great teachers organizing classes together. Mm -hmm. John, we can invite parents. To be yes, why not? Co-facilitating. Co Co-facilitating, yes. We yes. challenge each other. Also, this is fusion education. So it's about two people working together, uh, not only teaching together, but planning the classes together and also assessing the students together. And we have a few different co-facilitating structures, team teaching, mm. alternative facility, uh, team facilitating, sorry, John. No problem. Alternative <laughs> facilitating, station facilitating, <laughs> parallel yeah. facilitating, and one facilitate and one, one. assist. Yes. I like to use, uh, for me, the core is uh, team facilitating. Dating. Team facilitating involves two educators teaching the classroom at the same time. They teach the same content, have equal roles and responsibilities within the classroom. Mm. It's a model I like to use because if you have an international teacher and a Chinese teacher, mm -hmm. I think in terms of one plus one mm -hmm. equals three. <laughs> and let's start with an example. Let's start with an example. Example, yes. Because John, yes. one plus one is equals three. Fusion yes. education is about we blend. We blend create, everything. We, to create an additional value, to create new, innovative new, new value. And, and quite interesting practices and programs. Yes. Yes. So again, Tianjin, grade two, primary grade two. We were having an, a teacher from South Africa who was very good with the kids, uh, wanting to help the kids, even the kids with difficulties, who went home thinking about how can I help these kids? His co-teacher or co-facilitator, the Chinese uh, teacher, was experienced, but thinking more in terms of how do I finish the unit? How do I finish mm -hmm. the lesson? St students need to learn these words or this content. So she was a little bit more strict. <sighs> One day, that teacher was new at the school. I was new at the school. He came to me after like somewhere in October. Ah, look. I cannot, I will not stay too long at this school here. <laughs> I go home and I, and I cry and I feel, and I can't sleep, but I cannot work with that teacher. Yeah. No way. Oh. <laughs> I said, what do I do? Do I, do I, do I call a meeting, uh, mm. the, the two of you, the three of us, and we talk through this? Do I talk 
with that teacher. He said like, I don't know what, you do whatever you want to do. He was desperate. And I talked with a Chinese teacher and I said, oh, there seems to be a problem in your co-facilitating team. And she said, yeah, yeah, I, I, I interrupt him too often and I should control that. And I asked, is that a big problem? No, 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 I can, I, can, I can control that, I can change that. Well, for me, it was the moment to come in to observe both teachers, not only when they were co-facilitating, but also when they were having their, their single class. And I used uh, the, my, my phone to record the classroom because some things you cannot really explain. They yes. don't understand when Visual. you say it, but when you, sh when you show it to say like, hey, you were doing this, that's what I mean. And we worked. After every class, we got together, we worked together, and we changed. We improved. Oh. So one plus one equals three after some three. time. Yes. The most important thing is that they were understanding each other. They were accepting each other. They were planning better. Mm. Because if you make time to sit together, to plan together, that what, that's what they were missing. They were just dividing work before, but they were not planning together. And then it was like, okay, I give you seven minutes here because the foreign teacher had time to make connections with other subjects, to make connections with real life information. So to make it relevant and meaningful for the students. And the Chinese teacher had time to cover everything, to make sure the kids know these words, know to use them and understand the content. So, Connecting over time, when the Chinese teacher was teaching, then the foreign teacher was spending time with the individual students. He was focusing more on their developments. He was following up more week after week. So we have vertical integration and differentiation at the same time, because students have differences and there is time to work with the individual students. Um, Interlinguistics, yeah. that's the most important. Uh, I if I sure. say one plus one, e one plus one equals three, it's really about the interlinguistic dimension. Can you imagine when a team is switching almost naturally from English to Chinese, mm. Chinese to English. English, and at the end they are like switching more often because the kids are excited, the kids feel comfortable. At the age of eight, Kids have an environment where two languages are used together in a yes. natural way. And they pick it up like. in a natural way. They use it in a natural way. And this is amazing to see, John. And this yep. is the value that we need to use more. That's why yep. co-facilitating is really the core of fusion education. Yes, yes. OK, yes, let's I move agree. on. Yes, uh, I agree. I'll, 100%. Alternative facilitating, John, is, mm. is uh, it's good to use when we want to differentiate. Yes. We have uh, one teacher is providing a smaller group of students with specialized uh, mm -hmm. instructions, while the other teacher is taking care of the other students with the regular instruction. Mm -hmm. um, this is good to differentiate when you have uh, students that excel and you want to you wanna, you wanna yes. focus on them, students that, that struggle. Or you have international kids in a class of mainly Chinese mm -hmm, kids. Mm -hmm. um, I like to have 40 minutes where you, the first 20, 25 minutes, you work with all the kids together. And yes. then you can separate uh, to focus on some special groups. Station teaching. Station teaching is very important if I think about the science example. We have science in Chinese. We have science in English. We have STEAM. If you organize a class where the Chinese science teacher works together with the uh, international science teacher on the same concept, but different aspects. Well, you can mm -hmm. organize, you can use station facilitating. You have different station. One station is for the Chinese teacher. One station is for the international teacher. And maybe one station for the students to work on an assignment. And they rotate from station to station. Uh, very good example here to use. Of course, Planning is important, yes. John. Um, I think uh, the other two we don't have to discuss right now. The first mm -hmm. three are most important. important one. Um, it's, it's very important to 
and co-facilitating to together choose which model you want to lose to use yeah. which which uh, which structures we've seen here you want to use uh, put up a united front mm. uh, see yourself as a team not as I do this and you do, you that, do that, and I don't care what you do, and I do my thing. This is not this is not uh, fusion education. Um, so we have to plan together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important we sit together and plan together, and we have to learn from each other. That's the collaborative part. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree hundred percent, uh, Mr. Powers, and that's why not only fusion education is a pillar that will help us to reach the one subject growth knowledge horizontal integration vertical integration that will help us reach to differentiate easily it will at the same time help us to have a better classroom management an easier classroom management a more affordable classroom management and create a co-facilitating environment that is too close to classroom without borders at the same time to real life based education and that's why my question number five is we have the leaders of the schools we have the administrators if they don't help us, it's difficult for us to uh, be innovative and uh, establish all these new approaches. How can we actively mm. involve school leaders and administrators within fusion education? Good question, John. And I would say like there are two groups of, of uh, administrators here. Mm -hmm. You have, if I look at China, mm -hmm. most administrators, they work in their monoculture. Mm using Chinese language, using Chinese uh, management practices. And they are not used to, to, to blend languages. Different practices. Language cultures, yes. Um, so with most of the people, it, it makes no sense to discuss my ideas of fusion education because it's mm -hmm. far from what they experience. Mm -hmm. And I prefer to start in silence. Mm -hmm. And I prefer to find a few teachers at school. Sometimes there is, one, 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 one uh, vice uh, administrator who is willing to, to come in. Well, you start silently and small. And when you got results, significant results, maybe after one semester, usually leadership will come in. They'll say like, wow, how did you realize that? This is, this is nice. Then it's a good time to allow people to come in, let them understand what you are doing, let them plan together with you. Yes. Think about how will you transfer ownership to them? That's how I like to work. The second group are people that are more open, that already begin to, 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 to think in different cultures, different languages, who have experience, but who don't really know how to implement fusion education. Mm -hmm. It's still important that I take the lead. Uh, classroom, management we've seen the example it's good yes. that we can plan together but i should take the lead to show how we do it and to let them grow into it mm -hmm. co-facilitating the same um, if i see i've seen many schools where co-facilitating is not well done uh, people don't know how to do it well but if they see oh we have a good model to work on it they, they easily grow into it um, with people who are experienced, I also like to, to set up, to start up some pilots in the curriculum. Uh, where can we blend in the curriculum? I gave examples about science, but you have many more examples, but you make choices based on, on the teachers you have. Where do we experiment with fusion education? Um, I still would like to, it's an emerging concept fusion education. I started to experiment five years ago with fusion education. And schools are happy to hear my, my understanding of fusion education. Uh, but still, most people don't know how to work on it. And today we begin to see a little bit how fusion education could be established. I therefore would like to invite educators who would like to try out fusion education to contact me, to work with me to share experiences because we can help each other. We can be collaborative. We can blend already together. So I invite all of you to uh, to contact me. And I think John will share my, yes. my email. Yes, at the end. Address the email, and yes. phone number at the, end, at the end. And you can help them all. You, Mr. Powers is here to help sure. you all, the educators, in everything. 
especially nowadays in fusion education. So mm. the question uh, number six, which is a very important mm -hmm. one, and uh, I think now everyone knows what fusion education is. Now we go more in detail and see the, the main fire of it and ask what crucial role can fusion education play today in reinforcing one, one subject knowledge approach, number two, classroom without borders, number three, student-centered differentiated classrooms, and number four, STEAM educations. So we can say that those four are the, let's say, the, the ma uh, major pillars of 21st mm -hmm. century lifelong learning education. So what crucial role yep. can we talk about this, of course, now we explained about this, about the horizontal integration, but let's say here specifically in one subject taught knowledge, classroom without borders, a student centered finished classroom and STEAM education. Good job. It's a, um... This is a big, uh, a big meal. Yes, yes, uh, yes. I'll, I'll try to topic. be. Uh, I'll try to be brief. Mm -hmm. um, when we start blending, like the first point, one subject called knowledge approach. When we start blending, we realize that there are no diff, not 20, 30, 50, 100 realities. There is yeah. one reality where we put things together, just like the child is making connections and developing developing the brain. Right. We, we, we blend and, and we continue to blend and we feel like, wow, this is interesting. This is beneficial to our students. They learn more, they learn deeper and we can't stop actually. We have to be realistic. You cannot change and blend everything, but doing a little bit already will, will help your students a lot. Yes. Yes. And you will feel that, hey, it's not bad to move towards one subject called knowledge. John, you are the expert on that. Would you tell us a little bit more how fusion education can help you? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, well, when you want, for example, to say your students that, you know, guys, uh, all those subjects are one, because in real life, in real life, they are not going to face a mathematics problem, a chemistry problem, a French problem, an English problem, a Chinese uh, problem, or uh, social studies problem, going to face a holistic problem, a major problem. And in this major problem, they are not going only to use one language, they will use all the languages that they know to face, to overcome that challenge, to overcome that problem. And that's why those three different dimensions are going to help us create the one subject called knowledge. You cannot have a full, the apex of uh, horizontal integration which is one subject called knowledge without, number one, doing a complete vector integration, a complete horizontal one between all subjects. And to do those two, you need to blend the cultures, to blend the languages, and you need to work on the interlinguistic dimension, the hidden one that we always forget to do it, not be doing it by because no one is telling us to do it, the interlinguistic one, which is the languages the languages, because the students, they are getting two, three different views in three different uh, languages. They are lost. They want to know which one is the correct one. Why they are giving us all those information. They're asking those questions and there are no answers. And that's why by doing fusion education, fusion is a catalyst that it's going to join horizontal integration, vertical integration, and interlinguistic uh, integration in one concept called one subject called knowledge. Good job. I like uh, the way you talk. Mm, thank you. Second point you mentioned is classrooms without borders. Yes. Once we start blending, we will see that we break down borders. Each time when I enter a school, the first thing I do is I break down mental borders. Why should we have borders? Like I said, students in their brain, they don't need borders. They need to make connections without borders. That's how they learn better. So we take away borders between subjects, between people, between cultures. Yes. And the next step is that we collaborate between classrooms, uh, between grade classes. And the next step is that we invite parents and the community in the classroom because we don't have walls anymore and we learn from each other. And lastly, we invite nature, the city, 
life. That's what we should see as classrooms without borders. We don't have to limit ourselves here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Thirdly, thirdly, uh, the third point, John, you mentioned is student-centered, differentiated classrooms. Differentiated classrooms. I think to be truly um, student-centered and genuinely differentiated in classrooms, we need to understand what lifelong learners mm -hmm. need. And if we look at lifelong learners, what they need is they need to develop self-motivation. Self, uh, lifelong learners need to acquire information through reading, through listening, observing, experimenting, uh, practicing. Uh, they need to search for personal meaning. They need to trigger recollection of information through note-taking, through practice, discussion, experiment, and they need to reflect on their learning. Well, I give you an exercise. The audience should do an exercise on these different points, like how can fusion education help? If we integrate horizontally, will it help students to search for personal meaning? Will it help students to develop self-motivation so they can become lifelong learner? If we work interlinguistically, will we give meaning to, to students? Yes, 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 of yes, yes, and yes. Will we help them to rec recollect information? Yes, One yes, million yes. Minutes. Will we help? Will we help them to look back at their learning process? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So that's that's really the advantage here of fusion education has a tremendous effect on the learning of students. Yes. It's important that students can construct, John, their own understanding through different languages and different sources of information. Um, through fusion education, they become more willing to read, to compare, mm -hmm. to analyze information. And through fusion education, they develop higher thinking skills mm -hmm. and they become stronger communicators. Yes, yes. Confident, independent learners. Yes, okay, John, your last part, yes. STEAM education. education. I, I, I love STEAM, but we have a problem with STEAM. Mm. What's the problem? STEAM, STEAM actually is, is, is fusion education. Oh. It blends science, technology, engineering, art, and M is math. Mathematics. Uh, the problem is that... Uh, all over the world, you see companies developing materials, de de develop, developing STEAM mm -hmm. uh, manuals and, and, and textbooks and so on. So schools are not using it in the, with the initial concept of blending. They are just using it unit by unit by unit by unit. So that's, mm -hmm. that's sad, John, because we, we should use STEAM education, adding the interlinguistic dimension to really promote fusion education. Yes, yes, I agree. That's why, again, fusion education is, as you see in the pyramid here, is, as we said, the main catalyst, the main link to link the 21st century lifelong learning, reinforcing it via uh, classroom without borders, via one subject growth knowledge. It's reinforcing all those pillars to reach, as you said, Mr. Powers, the 21st century lifelong learning and make sure that our students are right for today and ready for tomorrow. And my question number yep. seven, which is the last question, and then we'll go to the questions from our dear educators, dear attendees. Do you think that the positive influence of fusion education on education will grow progressively with the years and will form a major turning point for the 21st century education? Uh, good question, John. Mm. To be honest, I have been working five years now with some ideas of fusion education in different schools. Mm -hmm. And especially this year uh, mm -hmm. is more like a sabbatical year where I finish different, I have visited different schools in Ooh. China, all bilingual schools. Bilingual. Uh, Having, having a national curriculum next yeah. to an international, international one, kindergarten, 
kindergarten, primary, middle and high schools. And I, when visiting these schools, they all told me like, we struggle to blend mm -hmm. these programs mm -hmm. because we are tired of, of, of parents ask us questions. Why, how do you see it together? And we can't answer that. Uh, sometimes they have three programs, four programs. How can parents be clear about about uh, about direction the school is following if we if we are not blending? And I was it was the first time this year, John, visiting all these schools. Um, I was talking about fusion education and how we can blend horizontally, vertically, uh, interlinguistically, but all strategically. So that towards the parents, we don't have three, four programs because we have a single identity that is that is overarching our different uh, our different uh, curriculums at school, and they were very positive towards me. Mm. Um, happy to hear my ideas, and it seemed like they all wanted me to work for their school. Excellent, um, but that's for next year, uh, mm. my next move. Yeah. What I want to avoid, John, is that we introduce a very complicated system mm. where it is not easy for educators to know where to start and how to start. And mm. that's what happened with holistic education. Mm. I remember 10 years ago, everyone was talking about holistic education. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Even today, even today, they still have seminars on holistic education. education. But nobody's learning how to how to implement that, how to realize that. So it's not a concept, it's a brilliant concept, but we don't know how to how to develop it. Yes, yes I agree. Fusion education, on the other hand, like you see, you can start small classroom management, co-teaching. I would mm -hmm. suggest co-facilitating is definitely a part to start mm -hmm. thinking in terms of fusion education you can have a light program and you can have a more intensive program but i believe that fusion education will become more important in the future john maybe not this year maybe not next year because because of the pan pandemic and, then, and the depressive economies <clears throat> i feel that everything is a little bit divided yeah and i i expect that we will talk more about fusion education after two years in 2023. Mm -hmm. So before ending, I would like to share yes, please. Two, two very nice slides and expressions by two great educators. Yes, yes. The first one is from Lisa Delpit. Mm -hmm. If the curriculum we use to teach our children does not connect in positive ways to the culture young people bring to the school, it is doomed to fail, not work. <laughs> so that's clearly also what we talked about today. What is yes. what's the other expression, John? Yes, it's very very important because as uh, we say culture, we mean by culture the language and everything because language controls culture. If we are mm -hmm. going to let's say tell the or explain to the students in different uh, cultural backgrounds, different languages that they are not used to, they don't know how to do it. It's not linked to their curriculum life. They will say the why. And when they start asking the why question, that means we are going to failure in the educational mm. potential that we have in that school. I agree with that 100%. Good one. Yeah. Good one. The second one. The second one is from our late uh, Sir Ken Robinson. God bless his soul. And everyone, everyone know him, knows yes. him, and I everyone the honor is to following meet with him twice. Yeah. his ideas. Really? Yes. Lucky you. Yeah. Lucky you. Um, Sir Ken Robinson is saying school systems should base their curriculum not <clears throat> on the idea of separate subjects, but on the much more fertile idea of disciplines, which makes possible a fluid and dynamic curriculum that is interdisciplinary. Today we have added the third dimension, yes. John, the inter interlinguist, yes. interlinguist, like interlinguistic dimension. I must say it's a new concept because mm. I think mainly from the, the idea of you have mixed parents and kids the age of two, three year old are very, very open to different languages. And naturally they grow through these different languages. I like to create that. 
and I usually start in grade two of primary school and it works perfectly, I can tell Excellent. you. Um, like I said earlier, I, I'm curious to the questions that come up right now, but I look beyond that. I invite educators willing to work on fusion education to share things with me. And you can see my uh, email address on this slide, powells underscore look at outlook.com. Those in China can call me, um, 1-880-710-8372. Perfect, yes. no mistakes in it. <laughs> cool, thanks, thanks, John. No problem, thank you, thank you. So as a conclusion, Mr. Powells, we can say that today, students mm -hmm. are asking, why in real life all is blended and school all is separated why do we have walls between classes between subjects between languages in schools and why we are not breaking those walls that are destroying our creativity and innovation why our facilitators our teachers are teaching us in different ways and different subject content for the same subject in different languages we are lost Help us, please. The answer and the solution is implementing the one, the only hidden and essential interlinguistic dimension leading to fusion education. A special thanks, Mr. Powers, for today. Our great international education expert and wish that Mr. Powers, thank you very much. It's what is outstanding. A special thanks to Juan Juan Village for always being educational hub and hosting all those webinars for the sake of the sacred mission of education for the missionaries in education that are the basis, the main pillar of the future, the main pillar of today of future. And special thanks to all of you, dear educators from all over the world that you joined us today. 